Have you ever been told that your chronic pain is, you know, all in your head? Or been handed yet another prescription that just kind of masks the symptoms but doesn't fix anything? Well, today we're diving into a really fascinating manuscript by Mark Fox called Healing with DMSO and Natural Remedies. Think of it as a field guide for getting your life back using some powerful and, yeah, maybe a little controversial tools. Okay, let's get into it. And the author kicks things off with this statement right here, and it's so important that we start with this. If you are someone who lives with chronic pain, you've probably felt dismissed or maybe misunderstood. So this whole approach, it's really built on one foundational idea. Your pain is real. And even more importantly, that you can heal. To really see what this looks like, let's talk about a guy named Jack. He's a 72-year-old farmer from Iowa. His arthritis was so bad, he couldn't even grip a screwdriver anymore. He tried pretty much everything. And then, get this, his veterinarian suggested he try DMSO. Yep, the same stuff they use on injured racehorses. Jack was skeptical. I mean, who wouldn't be? But just three weeks later, he was back on his feet, out in the fields, fixing fences. This story, it's not about some magic chore. It's about getting a glimpse of something so many people lose, hope. And Jack's story, it's not a one-off. Millions of us are caught in what the author describes as a silent, invisible epidemic. You can't see it on an x-ray or a lab test, but living with it, it's a full-time job with absolutely no days off. So the big question is, why are so many people feeling so stuck? Well, a big part of the problem is that many of us get trapped in what the book calls the medical maze. On one side, you have the conventional path, you know the drill, seven-minute appointments, a never-ending parade of pills, and then maybe the suggestion of a risky surgery. But as the book points out, the deeper problem is that the system itself is often built to just manage our symptoms, not to actually heal the root cause. And that leaves this huge empowerment gap where you end up feeling more like a passenger in your own health journey instead of the driver. So if the symptoms aren't really the problem, what is? Well, the manuscript argues that to find the real answer, we have to stop chasing the pain itself and start targeting the source. And that source, the real culprit, is inflammation. The author uses such a brilliant analogy for this. Think about it. Normal, acute inflammation is a good thing. It's like your body's fire department rushing to an injury to put out the flames. But chronic inflammation... That's like a fire alarm that's broken and just will not shut off. It's constantly blaring in the background. It's this low-grade, simmering fire that's driving not just pain, but pretty much every major chronic disease we face today. So what's lighting this fire in the first place? It's kind of sobering when you see how our daily lives are just embedded with these triggers. It starts the second we make up to a jarring alarm spiking our stress. Then maybe a processed breakfast sends our blood sugar on a roller coaster. We sit for hours, our circulation gets sluggish, and then we unwind by what? Doom scrolling on our phones, surging our cortisol again? It's not one big thing. It's the slow daily drip of these habits that puts our bodies on constant high alert. Okay, so if we have this fire, how in the world do we put it out? This brings us to the book's central and, yeah, most controversial character, DMSO which stands for dimethyl sulfoxide. The author gives it a great nickname, the smelly miracle in a bottle. And it's basically a natural byproduct from making paper out of wood pulp, which of course leads to the question you are probably asking right now. If this stuff is so great, if it helped Farmer Jack walk again, why haven't most of us heard about it? Why isn't it on the shelf in every single pharmacy? And according to the manuscript, the answer is frustratingly simple. It's all about economics. DMSO is a naturally occurring substance. It's cheap to make, and you can't patent it. And if you can't get a patent, you can't slop a $300 price tag on it. So there's very little financial incentive for big pharmaceutical companies to champion it as a mainstream solution. So what does it actually do? This stuff is really fascinating. As you can see, it's a total powerhouse. It soaks through your skin and tissues like almost nothing else. It dials down inflammation, it gobbles up damaging free radicals, and it literally interrupts pain signals. But this last point might be the coolest of all. The manuscript calls it a molecular Uber driver. It can carry other healing remedies deep into your tissues, right where they need to go. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the smell. 
When you use DMSO, it can make your breath smell a little bit like garlic or oysters for a bit. It's just a known side effect. But I love how the author puts it with this quote. It's all about perspective, right? Is a temporary garlicky scent worth getting your mobility and maybe your whole life back? For a lot of people, that is an easy trade. But here's something the book makes really clear. True, lasting healing is never about just one magic bullet. DMSO is an incredibly powerful tool for sure, but it works best when it's part of a whole toolkit, a complete strategy for getting well. And that strategy, it really starts with what's on your plate. This is a great visual of an anti-inflammatory diet. And notice, it's not about restriction or what you can't have. It's about what you can add to your plate that actively heals you. We're talking fatty fish loaded with omega-3s, leafy greens, berries packed with antioxidants, and those good, healthy fats from nuts and olive oil. All of this works from the inside out to cool down that inflammatory fire. Next step in the toolkit is what the author calls the golden warrior, turmeric. You probably have it in your spice cabinet. Its active compound, curcumin, is just one of nature's most powerful anti-inflammatories. It's a simple daily habit that can have a really profound benefit over time. The toolkit also gets into some really cool modern biohacking tools. Red light therapy might sound a little bit like science fiction, but the science behind it is solid. It basically uses specific wavelengths of light to supercharge the mitochondria, you know, the little powerhouses inside your cells, which helps speed up repair, reduce inflammation, and heal tissues on a cellular level. And of course, we can't forget about the medicine that is absolutely free, movement. I love this phrase, motion is lotion. It's perfect. We're not talking about running a marathon. Even just five minutes of gentle walking or stretching a day sends a powerful message to your body. It says, hey, I'm not giving up, I am still in the game. It's about treating your body with love, not punishing it. So after we've looked at the problem, the tools, the strategies, we land on the single most important part of this entire equation. This is the big shift. It's moving from feeling like a victim of this epidemic to becoming the empowered hero of your own healing story. But empowerment can feel like a vague word, right? How do you actually do it? You do it by turning guesswork into gold. You become a detective in your own life. This isn't about being obsessive. It's about being strategic. A simple journal helps you see patterns and triggers. Apps can make tracking things like sleep and food super easy. And getting some basic lab tests, like for C-reactive protein or vitamin D, that gives you an objective scorecard. This data is what transforms hope into a real, concrete, actionable strategy. And that brings us to the final and most important thought. The core message of this entire manuscript is that your pain, it is not a life sentence. It's a signal. It's your body trying to communicate with you, trying to get your attention. So the ultimate question we want to leave you with is this. What is your body trying to tell you? And more importantly, are you ready to finally start listening?